Okay, so we're back with some PSO. So I wanted to go over a thread that I saw the other day in PSO talking about unappreciated quests. So we're going to go from number five to number one from Miku and the Affinia Forum. So they talk about as their number five, we're just going to read it out and I'll leave it on screen for the chat. Sweep up Operation 9. From them, they say it's honestly the best illegal quest for getting items like V502, Nace Claw. I rarely see it run. Quests like Phantasmal World 4 seem far more common, despite just being a few illegals per minute. I think this quest, from what I recall, was pretty solid for it. And I think some of this has to do with the fact that Phantasmal World 4 is an RBR, whereas I don't see Sweep Up 9 there as often. Honestly, I think both are fine, and both are runnable quests, quote-unquote. So we'll go through the list one by one, and I guess I'll, I'll gear up for Tower. So let's, I guess, go over, potentially, what we should be bringing in for Tower. Give me a moment to switch this over here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just clear this out. I'm only interested in Tower or Seabed Tower. Actually, CCA Tower as well. I think from our perspective, White ID usually wins out because it has things like V502 Cycle Wands. But I think from the perspective of the other enemies, I mean, Redria only really has V502 of interest from my list. I think unless we're doing like Purple ID specifically, I don't see what else we would really run into here. So interestingly, I don't see Purple's V502, so I'll correct that since I know it gets that. But I think I'm leaning more towards a White ID run. So what I could do for the chat, I could bring in a White ID Force to kind of help with this. I'll check the other stats later. See, this is how we this is how we check in real time if we miss any items. So we'll go, for example, back to our ultimate list here. Let me drag it in. The reason we would be interested from like a white or not white ID from a purple ID perspective is that when we do tower specifically, purple gets quite a few options. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up and I'll go fix that after the stream. We drag this in. Here. So from this perspective, you basically just want to pick an ID that has a V502. Sadly, as I said before, red ID doesn't really have anything of interest. If you look at their list, like, do do I really want to get, like, a Heavenly Battle, for example? Not really, on that list. Or at least if we're playing, like, Purple ID, you could get some ult rares. But, like, yeah, like, in, in theory, I could get Twin Blaze from Red ID, but, like, I'm not gonna do that hunt. Anyway, let's jump back into PSO itself. I'll switch into Forest, Chat could just bring damage or whatever. I do want to clear the quest in order. This is probably the hardest of the group that's on the list. Actually, is it C Bank 4? I think it is C Bank 4. So, this quest, as long as we have at least one Ranger, I think we're fine. Otherwise, we just need DPS, or yeah, DPS slash. Uh, Zilor. We should be good there. Yeah, I'll check some of the listings. I think some of them I might have just accidentally listed as just, like, one or the other. I'll bring in Static Vic for this. Yeah, we'll go back to that list, and then we'll do an honorary... Honorary number one, where I th they mentioned in the thread that they forgot to list the quest. I'm gonna go, ho go ahead and host this episode, too. So I would recommend chat bring in a serious character. It will be very sad. <laughs> See that? I even have the bringer's rifle ready. I just I just swap into bringer's rifle. It's like I knew deep down, chat, this character would be running sweep up operation of some sort. So we'll give chat a moment or so to join. In the meantime, I can see what happened to the B502 for Purple ID. There it is. Oh. 
Probably just a mislabel. Got everything except for a spare V101. Mm. Oh, in the case of purple, it looks like I just completely skipped it. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That is that is fair to skip. But I should probably go back and clean that up a little bit. Placeholder for two for towers. E502. Got Dango, got a parameter, Murphy will be here soon. In the meantime, I'll just correct the list. See, that's what I can do in the downtime. We're just gonna test stress test our list and add where we see things that are missing. So Ilgil specifically on purple ID is pretty good. I think overall I lean a little more towards uh, white ID, power, but purple ID is still really good. I like purple ID when I'm playing solo and doing like a lot of uh, earlier checks. Because getting heavenly abilities while you're so early on in the game is pretty huge. The nice thing about using formulas is I don't have to worry about the math. It'll just calculate it out if I type it in. 819.2 drop rate. We do benefit at least from the rare or for the drop anything we that puts us at approximately one in 2100. That looks about right. Interestingly, when I look at the uh, website percentages, the website percentages are off, so I'm not really sure how they came to some of those totals. To be honest with you, is like I, I'm just using Excel math. Like I'm multiplying two fractions together, and I put and I put it in as a percentage. So it, it can't get more specific than that. So if I'm using their fractions, I'm not getting the same results. Oh, I don't know if they rounded in that or they rounded in the uh, total fraction. That makes sense. But I don't think that's a math error on my side. Go ahead and sort our inventory out. So we're going to bring in a bringer's rifle. Team will just bring DPS. So my goal is basically to Zalur so that the hunter can burst things like Epsilon or kill Ilgil. Uh, Rangers will be using a lot of Frozen Shooter to lock down enemies. I can stun lock to some extent the big murder flowers. And the other thing I need to make sure that I have is fire resist. So third double fire resist here. So I think with Adept, Heavenly HP, three seals, I should have enough fire resist to survive Epsilon, I believe. Because he normally does, I believe it's 1460-ish, if I remember my sheet correctly. So if I resist 30% of that, I should just barely survive. With a, or excuse me, I resist 40% approximately. So I should be okay there. But yeah, I think we ran Sweep Up Operation 9 a few times before. I believe this did come up here. So this is, as, as I said before, the hardest of the runs. The others will be significantly easier. Maybe one day we'll have a my favorite tower quest. <laughs> that could that could be one in the future. Which tower quest would I actually run? has a timer by default. I think last time we played RBR, so it wasn't really relevant. Yeah, 
we're gonna do our best to just lure repeatedly. What? Oh, I must have been in range of the Dill Lily. I'm just like, I'm like, wait a minute, I, I dealt with the Ilgil, why did I get punished for that? Mostly fine. A little worried about the gel lilies getting out of control. Let me stunlock them. And my damage is never going to be great, so I just got a demon repeatedly. I mean, I'm 180 ATA. So I'm, I'm as good as the Phonuman's going to get, kind of thing. So at least we'll try to debuff them. Any, any boxes in tower are generally a good sign. This is an example of, you know, the quest spawns are mostly fair. I don't think I have any problems with what we're witnessing so far. Like, you want to spawn a murder flower there? Okay. Like, I'm okay with that. Listen, if they, if they want to make sure it's at a place where I can reach it in melee, like, I'm totally okay with that. Oh, this is fine. And I'm Del Beater. I think I landed a demon there, but felt satisfying. Nice photon draw. <laughs> not, sure, not sure I appreciate those chainsaws, but that's fine. Let's heal up the team real quick. This is not good. I'm gonna try mate and then just try to Rivardo. Eat him stun low. He's bullying me. Get off of me. Thank you. Team saved me on that one. So yeah, it's like so far, uh, you know, I, if this ends up in RBR rotation, which I don't recall if it is, it's just one of those things that's a bit nebulous to me. I think they might have an official list now, maybe. Look at that, I actually killed via ATP as Fo Newman. Felt satisfying. Oh, I did some big damage to Del Beater there. Felt like I contributed. Oh, I land demons there again, that saves some time. But it's like, even if we can't full clear it, because my character's kind of suboptimal, you know, at least I feel like, you know, we're, we're doing something. Not dying instantly to Gibbles, which is a good sign. This character is leveled just enough, quote unquote. And again, most of these feel like I'm able to reach them in melee range, so it feels a bit more fair. the demons on him, GG. Aw, oh, ran over by Delvita. Oh, get off of me. Thank you, Zulor. Delvita wanted me. I was gonna say, the goofy music is I get run over by uh, Ilgil, and Delvita feels appropriate. Just reapply buffs every now and then. So far, it feels like Hunter's- oh, Dark Room. That's- that's probably one of my least favorite gimmicks. It's not my- it's not my number one least favorite, but it's down there. Because it's hard to tell where spawns are. It feel- it can feel a little unfair. Like, this- this feels a little unfair trying to figure out where the murder flower is right away. The rest of the room doesn't seem too bad. Ooh, took some big damage there. 
team found the switch at least. Like we fireball. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That was uh, that was a little rude. <laughs> Them all being there as we congregated. That was unfortunate positioning on our side. I would like to debuff. Do you mind not uh, lasering me full screen? Thank you. I mean, at least it seems there's like boxes every now and then. Yeah, that 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 spawn was kind of rude. I think we were in technically the right position, but we didn't know it was going to be ill gill and all that nonsense. I'm. Oh my gosh, I got the quadruple freeze. The Rabarda of the gods. <laughs> like, okay, you know what, Chad? I'll take that. I'm I'm okay with that. But don't worry, Chad. I do have some escape dolls, so you don't have to go out of your way for me. I brought a lot to this quest of purpose. You you just let me die. It's fun. Okay, so there's a little warp over here. I'll immediately froze the Del Lily. Thanks, Diva. So I would say outside of that, the the dark room uh, sandwich. I think so far, you know, I would potentially rerun this quest again. You know, as long as it doesn't, if it has the cross shape ones, those those are the ones that make me upset. But even if, like, as I said before, even if we don't manage to full clear, I think this is fine for ill kill chances. Rip me. I got run over. I don't even have, like, terrible EDK. But yeah, I just get bullied by them. Unfortunate. They need to back up. Lower where we can. Oh, there's my level up. ATP actually matters here, because I do need to finish enemies. Got another escape doll. Poor Murphy. We both the team. I can't believe I'm at like 8 escape dolls or something. I've been... I died twice, but I picked up four escape dolls, and I came in, I think, with three. Very silly. Three. Okay, so I did burn a escape doll at some point. That's fine. Yeah, once this character gets higher level, my ATP getting closer to 800. I'll be able to use Excalibur on this run, and that'll help with DPS. Probably not run in the middle of the area. And it, they will notoriously jump at you if you stay in the middle. Get some point. On the plus side, I killed the Gibbles. Our first Epsilon is here. Brought her Glide Divine. That was actually my mistake to not bring it. I definitely have them. It's not a question of if the character has one. I specifically put one on this character. There we go. You know, for a tower quest, getting like 100 XP a second, that's actually fine for tower. So I will I will cautiously put this on my list of quests I would run again. Regardless if I get full clear, I think it gives me good options. Why is there another war? 
What horrible thing am I about to spawn into? Oh, Epsilon, that makes sense. <laughs> it's like, wh why am I getting the triple warp warning? <laughs> what, what, what is so bad that you want the party to split here? Like, oh, that makes sense. I'll go in the middle. I'll just heal Dango repeatedly. Dango as the hunter makes sense in the middle. Naya as the force have nothing better to do, so... That was a fast kill. Oh, I am gonna spam Rebarda like my life depends on it. Because it probably does. <laughs> it's all up to you, team. I landed my Zalore. <laughs> That's all I know. I'm rooted in place. There we go. Double Gibbles. What does it mean? Ooh, the, the, the demon swap from us. Oh, Gibble's ascending into heaven somewhere. Ooh. Oh, they're glitching out? Oh, I love to see them glitch out. Listen, if they can't skate past this, if there's a no skate policy over here, I will gladly take that policy. Yeah, they're, oh, they're glitchy. Oh, that's so good. Wait a minute, this is my favorite Ilgil spawn. It can't go- it got stuck on the laser barrier. That was the best one, chat. Ilgil where I can't actually do anything? That's my favorite. Alright, so I'm gonna get near the Epsilon. I'll let team deal with the other enemies. Can you stop nuking me? Can this guy we please be dealt with, thank you. I'm just kidding. Oh, and that was the quest. Oh, that was fine. That was totally fine. Okay, chat, we're gonna put that on the list. So we're forming a list on the side as we go through either RVR or our own choices. So I'm gonna say tower. Sweep up Operation Not. That was fine. There was like one problem room, and again, like most most tower quests usually have the quote unquote problem room, but like if that's all that was, that wasn't bad. Let's see what chat said in the log in a moment. Only a couple of annoying spawns, exactly. That moment where I wanted to pick up the Masetta, but it took. Or... I'm not going back for that Masetta chat. Sorry. That wasn't too bad. So we could officially put that on our quest list. I would not mind running this again. A tower quest. Yeah, I, I think what puts this above, I would say, a lot of the other really, really bad tower quests. Uh, I feel like you were mostly in melee range of a lot of the big problem enemies. Because, like, they assume that you're going to congregate where the last enemy wave spawned. And it generally felt fair as we went through that way. Or like, even if we didn't know the spawns, there was only like two where, you know, Del Beater is Del Beater kind of thing. But I feel like genuinely Hunter was able to do things, which is I think a good sign of a tower quest. Cause there's some where it's like, we're just gonna put like seven enemies on opposite corners of the room and it just becomes like borderline intolerable to play unless you have every spawn memorized. That quest didn't do that for the most part. No egregious cross formation run enders. Um, there wasn't like six Ilgil, three murder flower, Gaigui. Like the most we had was the final room, and that was fun. So yeah, I'll, I'll put that on the list of things I would run again. So if, if chat asks me what quest I would play in episode two, that is officially on the list. If it goes in RBR, that's even better. Let's take a look at what the next quest is from their list. Exactly. So, yeah, this is why I think it's important to kind of do these videos every now and then. We got to we got to break our cycle. Got to explore and expand. Up next, we have Random Attack Exerd Episode 1. Uh, so, oh, that's a good question. Who would have the best Exerd if it doesn't involve a boss stage? Hmm. 
So that quest can take you anywhere. I'm kind of leaning towards yellow ID. So there's, there's something known as the random attack exert where I'm assuming it, it means that one, stage one. No, 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 you can bring him going forward, that's fine. So we'll, we'll be going to, I think it is just purely... If it's the one I'm thinking of, it's either caves, caves, mines, or ruins. Indeed it is. So there's no bosses, there's an insane amount of XP. Let me put this on the screen, actually, so chat sees what I'm looking at. So, like, looking at the quest totals, you know, when I'm looking at this, you know, there's some... Caves, caves is usually the run I ignore. I think from our perspective, if we end up getting... Oh, it can have falls. Hmm. <laughs> what is this grass assassin? Why are there 52 grass assassins? I mean... I think from that alone, I would be tempted to run Green ID, just because, uh... Green ID would get, uh, Shurin, for those that don't know. Green ID also has some pretty solid boss drops. I was thinking about a different ID, but that might sway me in other direction. So maybe this is fine? I'll do Green ID into this. Yeah, we've definitely done this before. We haven't played it in a while. Yeah, but no, 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 but but look at the look at the enemies here. It says Chaos Springer. So I think I think it is the episode one rare enemy drops because Chaos Springer does not exist in the spaceship. I think I used to run this a while ago. Yeah, I used to run this a while ago, and I actually genuinely forgot what quest it was. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring in my green ID Ramar just to bring in some damage to the team. And that way, if chat wants to bring in force, by all means. So, I, I actually agree with this. I forgot about this. We ran this maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. I did like it. I specifically liked when we ended up in uh, Temple because of that. Because I saw that, and I'm like, oh yeah. I used to run this a while ago. So, Green ID, I think, is probably a solid choice here. If there were not Grass Assassins, I would lean more towards Yellow ID, because Yellow ID is just genuinely a really strong uh, start to finish here. And if we do get Red Ring and we fight Falls, at least this would, you know, give us the chance to do so. Yeah, it's, it's been a little while since we've run it. So, you know what? So far, so far, I'm liking the quest list here. It's saying good choices from Miku. Don't mind me, just r running double Centurion ability Heavenly Arms with Slicer and Fanatic. What a combo. Yeah, like the bosses are not guaranteed. I don't know how many bosses are in the run since it's been a while since I played it. It, it has access to all four episode ones, but it might just be one or two bosses. I think one time we had it two bosses, if I remember correctly. It's just random. <laughs> Look at that, I still have an event egg on this character. It shows you how recently I played him. A lot of better to not double up on the Fomars, that's fair. Yeah, Fomar struggles a little bit with ruins, but honestly, Fomar caves, mines is fine. There's no forest, sadly. If it was forest, that would be free Fomar. Hashtag free Fomar. Yeah, I'm gonna bring in just damage. I have Cannon Rouge in case we get certain bosses. I got Excalibur. I don't have a Stunlock with this character because I need more Vito ones. Eventually, I'll put one permanently on him. In fact, what does the Centurion ability do for me? Oh, and max accuracy without it. So yeah, if I if I wanted to, I could swap that out for Volt Up in certain phases. It should be maximum attack stage. Not to be confused with random attack sex third one, which is where I think I get confused all the time. Red player is absolutely needed. Do not continue otherwise. Well, hopefully I will not draw. Yeah, we're gonna bring in basically charge arm wherever we can. 
we're starting off in caves. And again, green ID, I basically just think Shuren. E every other drop to me is mostly irrelevant. Oh, look at the enemy density. Yeah, like I wouldn't run like purple here necessarily. We'll see if we get any ult rares. Yeah, green ID mines gets V101, most importantly. That, that's like the number one thing to grab. Getting other items is nice, but not required. And underground, we do have chances at a Psycho Wand, because there are an okay number of sorcerers. Also, rip the soundtrack. Which how does I switch it? Do this one. The Bomberman continues. Although we're running out of Bomberman games, John. Technically, Bomberman World we did listen to before. So yeah, so things like Nano Dragons, depending on your ID, can give you things like a uh, Red Sword or Kasami Bracer. But again, we're we're mostly just looking for maybe hit percentage Shuren, <laughs> just because we're we're dummy one. Gone Arm is okay draw. Good for beginners, but. Yeah, see, we want to see these Crimson Assassins. That's good that we're, we're fighting them. So I, I saw that Crimson Assassin count and I went, wait a minute. <laughs> right, chat? Like, hmm. On the off chance one of us gets a free sure and might as well do it. That is a lot of lilies. Holy. <laughs> I was going to say, save us, Force. I believe in you. See, in a solo run, this room would have been insane. Oh, I got bodied. But in my defense, I went down killing the enemy that shot me. Or at least I think that was the one that shot me. Just self buff slightly. I don't need that much of a damage boost, fortunately. Oh, no soul animizer and bar, oof. Yeah, a decent amount of Crimson Assassins I think justifies green ID. There are other IDs that I think do well here. But for the most part, we don't super care about these. I mean, I'm just gonna Excalibur that enemy. Yeah, one reason I remember liking this quest, large number of enemies. So I feel like forces actually get to do things in multiplayer here, just because there are so many raw targets most of the time, that it just ends up being like a ridiculous killing spree. Go pick up the skip doll. Might need that later, we'll see. Yeah, this quest potentially has really good XP when you clear it. I don't think it'll ever be an RBR, sadly. I would love if this quest was an RBR, but I, I don't think they'll put it in there. That is a lot of lilies. We're gonna kill as many as we can there, yeah. I did my job. I'm gonna kill these other two things bullying me. Leave the rest up to chat. I mean, the fact that on, like, a non-XP week, without fighting a boss, we're getting almost 100 XP a second on caves. It's pretty good. I mean, we're talking one of the lowest general uh, XP per seconds in the game. I will go back for that power material. Completely worth it. Safety heal. Yeah, I, I think I think so far I'm agreeing with the list. I feel like this is a quest I should probably run a little more if I want to level like Ranger. I think I just don't have IDs that need this is more the concern. But I, I wouldn't mind playing like solo force through this quest, for example. Oh yeah, we're in mines. The scariest place for Ramar. I don't like mines. 
That's fine. Our reward will be hopefully a B101 of some sort and or Excalibur. Those are the only important rares here. To be honest with you, unless unless you really want to go on off chance red ID S cards or something. Wouldn't really hunt this place for parts of brands. You might as well just go for Ubers here. Hmm, two different doorways opened. Guess I'll check over here. Yashminika. Another Yashminika. But not the Yashminika. Hello. I haven't triggered the other enemy yet. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move them a little bit. Team with the absolute big burst damage. Good job, team. Yeah, this is kind of like Fomar heaven. Fomar is like, you know what I'm gonna do? The Foey. Imagine something's gonna drop up. Wow, that is a room of a lot of dub chicks. I don't know where the switch is. I might have shot it. I don't really know. I pulled out a bazooka and just shot a random wall. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't see it. I just shot arbitrarily in that room. I'm not going to lie. That is a rude spawn. Like if we kill that other thing for this one. So this is where this room would be a little tricky if we were not more optimized. That was not where the brands was, I got faded. One. Kill the other. I mean, this is a good room for the Gafoe stacks, not gonna lie, like, that's just a lot of chip damage we're dealing. See, this room more just needs freeze traps more than anything else. So it does reward you for having a variety of characters. I'm in a long skinny hallway. Nice photon draw. I think you really do, honestly. There's Delt Sabers later. That can be kind of annoying. I chose to face tank that. <laughs> not gonna lie. Good job, team. Here's our big chance to get B101. Parameter. The Sinnohs wanted to embrace you. Hmm. I mean, if the Sinnoh Reds just aren't allowed to jump, these guys don't do anything to me. As long as I don't back up too far, I could just get free pot shots on them. I mean, I'll take that. I'm glad they spawned like that. Go ahead. Spawn in the middle again, I dare you. Exactly. So I shot them out of their initial animation, and then they just wanted to run at me. That is a lot of Sinnoh Reds for uh, Ubers. So some characters like Red ID care about uh, those kinds of drops. I don't know where the switch is. Oh, it's like really far back. Now I see it. Oh, look how many Sinnoh Reds that is. What? Oh, I remember their goofy spawn. Oh, I love that, where they're like hanging upside down, but they're below the floor. So glad that that's there. Anyway, don't mind me. Just going to try to clear as many as I can. The goofy spawn. I. Oh, okay. So if I want to go back, I'll probably take this word if I need the mine material. Get that up real quick. So, so far, no bosses. Palace. Okay. Uh, I think this might be the Grass Assassin Heaven, or, or it might be Chaos Bringer Heaven. It's one of the two. 
It's either 50 Grass Assassins or 30 Chaos Bringers. We'll find out in a moment, though. Might be the Chaos Bringers, which is okay. Unfortunately, Green ID is mediocre there. They get a Monkey King bar, I think. Nothing too crazy. It is funny going to episode 2 here. <laughs> I guess I could say this is my favorite episode 2 quest, because it doesn't have episode 2 enemies. Uh, so many different... Sinnohs. we're getting some more Crimson Assassin chances, and I'll take the Sinnoh Blues for sure. Not gonna complain about those. I believe those are V101 chances. Oh, I got bodied. Rip. A feeling where if I only was at full health, I would have lived. Oh my gosh, the Ramar Rabarda froze something? No way, chat. I'm putting in the work. Oh, my, uh... Low wall of enemies. I'm gonna need chat's help, I think, on this. Oh, don't go fully spam. I'm gonna die again, I think. Oh, no, I live this time. Yeah, that just triggers the Dark Brigger so quickly. What a finale, though. Okay, so Spaceship, I think, is the one that has the Oops All Grass Assassins. I will go take this burial. Why not? There we go. Don't you shoot at me full screen. That's so rude. Heal up. Oh boy. That feeling when the Shadow Clone actually stops you from killing something. Wow. I wish- I wish Green ID had slightly better drops on Darkbringer now, not gonna lie. They're okay on Del Saber. I don't die from that, that's the important thing. What a room. That was probably the hardest room we could have gotten. That, that room is definitely a low-level player killer. I don't think the other rooms are as intense. Again, like, 58 Grass Assassins is not the same thing as 30 Chaos Bringers, like 20 Sinos. Oh boy. This over here. It's funny getting my head cleaved in. Are gonna fight Dragon Boss? Poor Dragon. Rip Dragon chat. Big up in the chat for Dragon. <laughs> it's Zuka time. Wait for Dango to find the little portal. Dragon versus Bazookas. I think Bazooka's gonna win really hard. Yeah, Dango just has to go through the only open door. There we go. It's poor dragon though, rip dragon. So yeah, I would I would maybe put this in my my list again. The server will be going down for maintenance, why? That is unfortunate timing. How many minutes do we have? Oh, three hours? Oh. I should hopefully be done with the stream before three hours, but yeah, that's good to know, I guess. I was thinking it was gonna be like 30 minutes or like 60 minutes. Three hours isn't there. Oh, I was trying to find a luck material. Oh, sorry, Dango. But not as sorry as this dragon was for fighting three rangers in a force. <laughs> Brutality. Yeah, 
Green ID getting a uh, Holy Ray on Worm Boss is fine. We have like two potentially really strong boss drops. Yeah, decent XP. But again, you don't play this necessarily for the XP. You play it for that ridiculous density. So yeah, I guess I'll put this on the list as well. Make a note that green ID is it preferred. Another short quest. I don't. I don't know if I could promise that. I'm just doing them in order. So let me sell some items, and we'll check what's on the list next. I think we're coming up to Endless at some point, which is quite long. Find out in a moment, though. I'll waste some of the escape dolls, he doesn't need this many on him. Yeah, this character is basically equipped for everything. Escape dolls, I guess. But we'll double check what's next on the list, but so far, solid quest. So if we're feeling bored of episode one, and we just want to do generic rares versus specific hunts, not bad. So let's see what's next on the list. CCC Temple only. A very fast run on Pink ID for Aura, Field, Rambling May, Vivian. Gives good XP, PDs, materials. Very fun quest to killing tons of enemies super fast. Also, you can play Wifer. Um, yeah, I guess I could bring Pink ID into this. Murphy requested a short quest. CCC is pretty fast. Locale's Clock Challenge prefers Hell. But we could just do it for like two minutes. It's definitely a quest where Hell Needle is like the king here. But having other options isn't too bad. I guess we'll briefly showcase of why we go through that. So specifically at the top here, Vivian, Rambling May. And that's all th that's all that's really cared about, to be honest. Those are the only ID drops that matter. Let's go back to PSO. So I guess I will make the game as a pink ID. That will require me to become a force, I believe. Yeah, 6800 missed that is pretty nice. We're now in more of the spin off game territory for Bomberman. This is Robo Warrior. I think of less than 30 minutes or I'll just have to quit out working about an hour and that's about the latest I can take it. No worries, Murphy. We appreciate your company. You'll probably carry us most of the way through Endless, because I believe that is the next one on the list. Yeah, so this quest is pretty fun. I mean, I, I don't know if I call this under... appreciated? I think this is the only one on the list where I have, like, a pretty strong opinion that people play this quest. I don't know if they specifically just do resets here, but people do this all the time for the holiday quest. Because this is like the number one quest to run just to, just through Temple, uh, specifically when it's an event. So I think I would disagree with the qualification here. Because you, you do the holiday rappy, plus you go for the same pick ID stuff. I think we even did it on- I think we even did this quest- I think two seasons in a row, where we did this on Easter. The, more, the only problem with this quest, and why I think it's not run as often, but I wouldn't call it unappreciated for that reason, is that you just kind of need Hell, hell Needle. Like, it's it's just not, it's not like an if, like, one person needs it, or else you don't clear Temple Multiplayer. Whereas, like, if you're playing on Normal ID, uh, just spamming the normal clears for the Rappies, 
displays, of course. It's also used for unlocking. Which is why I'm saying, like... This is probably the one where I think categorized. I'm not sure I agree with it. What's it even under? Is that under VR? remember what it's under. Is it just under extermination? Okay, I was like, I was like, I couldn't remember if they considered that a uh, VR quest or not. I'll buff everybody up. I'm just gonna try to do damage with Rambling May here. Hopefully I do enough damage. Yeah, this quest is just all about doing as much damage as you can. The faster you're able to clear, the better. But obviously, if you don't have, like, a strong team, most people can't play this quest. Where, like, I feel like Sweep Up Operation 9 is still technically playable with weaker characters, you just might not be able to finish. This one, like, if you don't have stronger characters, you don't even get to the point in which it is good. It's a little awkward. do like basic Rappy kills here and again getting the Rappies to drop stuff you have to keep in mind too like we have to survive long enough to get the Rappies to run so it does require you to clear pretty quickly here I think we're doing an okay job yeah, we'll just keep an eye out for the Rappy rares and maybe Mill Lily so people will also get things like 13 here, just get Brave Man's not bad. But I mean, it's like, it's the same reason you'd run Temple normally. So I definitely don't mind Chances of Vivian, because that's like one of the few items I'm actually hunting. But again, it's not something I could just bring in like a group of level 90 people. Yeah, the big thing where we lose a lot of time is uh, there's a Moth Mothvist coming up. Where we basically just wait like 20 seconds legitimately for this thing to spawn. But fortunately, I think I have enough accuracy with this, so I think I can actually ATP this. Surprisingly. Normal. I'm so sad. So, like, I think my ATP is fine here, because I have Rambling May. Rambling May makes up for a lot of my stats. So I think, uh, ideally, I'd probably want, like, native dark. Rambling May with hit percentage, that way I can use it in episode 4 and temple. Yeah, here's the one where we normally time out, but we're actually getting pretty good clears. I think possibly Imperimeter might be using Healthy Duel, I'm not sure. But I think her damage is pretty good. My Rambling May is just 25 hits, sadly. I don't think it's strong enough for me to consider spearing it. But most people would just reset. We don't have a reason to just not go a little further, because we're in the quest. But yeah, most people reset as soon as you leave Temple. And pretty good XP. It's like the one next to me was like, I'm really surprised they did not get hit there. So I think we're at the end of the wave. I'm gonna try to hit the Rappies. Beat of the stage. So most people will just reset here. That would be the run. We might as well just keep going for XP. The team needs XP. Oh, uh, there's nothing really Pink ID really cares about in Spaceship. It isn't like Orange or Yellow ID where they get like genuinely good drops here and you would want to consider pushing. But for the sake of just getting free XP for the team. A downside to continuing. And sadly, as you get further and further, you get less and less seconds, which makes it pretty hard for clearing purposes. The teleporting sorcerer is the worst. I mean, I was able to combo kill a guilt chick with the buffs. Rambling May is putting in the work. I 
and low remote battery. Uh, we're, we're still kind of early in the runs. We're doing a, a quest list on an Infinia forum, and we're giving our opinions as we go through. So far, I think I agree with most of the list for what it is. But we're just showcasing quests that aren't played as often. I think it's a better way to frame that. Well, there's a god ability that dropped. I kind of want that, actually. That's a good item for new players. Not something I'll hunt for specifically for Spaceship, but since we're here, right chat? Might as well. You know 1980. That's not a bad pickup if you're doing Clear's Deal. Yeah, this is the wave I normally time out with the group. There's just so many enemies to kill. Unfortunately, at a distance, I end up shooting the crystals. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get cheesed by sorcerer here. Uh, barely got past the wave I normally stop at. Oh, untargetable. GG. I think that went fine. I'll put away the god ability. Hopefully you're doing well in remote battery. You're welcome to join us in a little bit of the later runs, because Murphy needs to step out regardless at some point. So we have up next, I believe will be Endless. They recommend green ID. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm honestly a big... I push this quest really hard for yellow ID, because honestly, yellow ID just has better drops. I would say from the standpoint of density, it slightly leans green on some of them. But I I think there's just entirely dead areas in green ID, which is why I'm not a fan. It's missing a lot of core ones that make it good, like uh, a lot of grass assassins. Let's go back to the list. So we just cleared Cal's Plot Challenge in Episode 2. For this one, they say if you can avoid getting many penalties and fight falls for Red Ring Chance. I don't think this is realistic. I'm gonna be honest with you, maybe maybe when you're fully sphered and everybody's 180 and they have Red Ring, I would be willing to agree with this. But like in a random group of people, or even people that are not 180, this is kind of hard to do. The, the ability to not use charge or lose HP uh, kind of deletes some of the clear speed of this. Glad you're doing well on remote battery. But yeah, so they're saying the only drawback bad party will make it fail to reach falls. I feel like bad party, I think that's just bad. I don't agree with their wording here. So I agree with them that it's underplayed and unappreciated, but I disagree with their ID choice, and I really don't like that they say a bad party. For red ring, is it even faster than TTF? Not really. No, because you you have to put, you have to clear two bosses, and it's like a lot of rooms in between. That's like I don't agree with it. But like we'll we'll just briefly pop this up so chat us a comparison. I believe this should be accurate. But for yellow ID here, like look how many items they get in just episode one, and this is why I normally select yellow ID for everything that isn't a falls run. Like. <laughs> put Rico's earring as a cosmetic here, but from our perspective, I mean, we get Spread Needle, Psycho Wand, Bringer's Red Arm, Heavenly Arm, V101, Excalibur, S-Red, Caduceus, uh, Red Sword, V101, Holy Ray, Heart of Item, Ejido 1975, Handgun, Saber, Frozen... Well, actually, you can't get Frozen Shooter in this quest because there's no rare enemies, but, like, there's just so many raw items here, it's kind of insane. Because I, I think the thing is, like, they lose a little bit, they don't get Sange, because there's no rare enemies, but they get, like, literally everything else on this list. So I, for one, really recommend Yellow ID, unless you're running, like, as I said before, Hyper Optimize, 180 Plus, Everybody Red Rings has Excal. Like, otherwise, comparatively, like, they get, they get Red Ring, but, like, I just, I just don't think their list is better. Like, e even just, like, in terms of density, I just, I don't agree with it. Like, they get Heavenly Arms, which is good, but it's, like... Eh? 
anyway, just I just wanted to talk about that specifically before we go into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my yellow ID, uh, Rockcast, who I think is a fantastic choice for this quest because what you want are traps and damage. He brings both. Yeah, like I just feel like it's I just feel like it's kind of ridiculous. Like I I think green ID is okay, but like. Wouldn't I want to run white ID more than green ID with that same logic? Because white ID gets better ubers. The only thing you're really missing out on is V101. But you're getting like way better chances of getting everything else. Like honestly, I would probably do yellow, white, green in that order. Like I'm not gonna say green is bad for it, but like I don't agree with their logic for it. I would rather do this quest for random ubers. And yellow ID gets several ubers. So, like, not only am I getting, like, relevant items, but I'm getting more than one relevant uber as well. Like, they get Heaven Punisher in this run, as an example. Which we've had before. I believe it was Diz actually got Heaven Punisher from this quest. So, I'm just saying, chat, like... I think Yellow ID is just superior in every single way. They get a better Vault Op. Nobody cares about Dragon. I guess they don't have a better Cave Worm? I guess? But I, I'd rather trade that for Psycho 1 chances, or I'd rather uh, exchange that for Heaven Punisher chances on the Grass Assassins, to be honest, over Shuren's. Like, if I'm gonna do Shuren, I'm gonna go run the other quest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, this quest is really, really fun. For people that haven't played it before, this is like my number one quest to play on Yellow ID. Like, avoid taking damage. Like, this one's not too terrible. As long as it's not, like, a lot of dragons, this is mostly doable for players. It's where you get, like, the don't take damage and it's ruins. Or you get something like, uh, don't use charge and you don't have, like, berserk arms or something. Where it's like, do you really want to lose clear speed in those runs? I feel like the answer's no most of the time. Yeah, there's some Crimson Assassins, and they're not bad, so might as well make them Uber Drops. Let's go ahead and move on to the next soundtrack. It's just like, basically every time we clear a floor, we get a new challenge. Avoid death. I like this one a lot, just because of the standpoint that, uh, we're able to basically be invincible randomly on the different floors. So I think this quest is genuinely really good for people that can't quite do falls, but are able able of doing, uh, what's it called? All the other bosses. This is like a perfect quest for XP, and just like, look how many raw enemies we're fighting here. So it's okay to fail the, pet, the challenge chat, we're not going for falls. We don't want falls, actually. The other way just, just gets uh, Rico's earring, which is a pure cosmetic item. Which I did list on my chart, so I think that's accurate. Avoid using the setup. Like, am I like if I don't have Berserk Needle, like, do I really, do I really want to take an extra minute to clear? No. So I I think I take a disagreement with the quote unquote bad party. It's like yes, you you need S ranks I think to clear this with uh, consistently. Between having things like a rest needle and alternate options to charge arm, because otherwise, like the main the main AOE damage item for rangers is charge arm. But being like restricted on that on a harder area is a problem. It's not too bad if it's like forest. Then I could see you know if you're wearing 13, maybe you just get Brave Man as your alternate. But like you need to be able to yeah avoid death is okay here. This one where you don't take damage, this this room in particular, I feel is like the run under for the perfect run. Just because there's so many lasers from these enemies that could potentially just tag you and make you fail the no damage challenge. And there's also a lot of enemies that leap at you for being too far away. So unless you like really know the quest, it's just very easy to lose the challenge in this room. I think this is probably the hardest room in the challenge. And again, it's random what order you get it to. So yeah, we're, we're not going to worry about that. We're going to go ahead and full steam ahead, murder everything. 
yeah, we've, we've gotten lucky before and we've gotten like no deaths on ruins, which is pretty much like a free category, no weapon restrictions. The no charge on ruins is really brutal. As a reminder, on floor number 9, we'll get the ability to go to a boss for floor 10, so we'll get a guaranteed two random bosses. And as I said before, most IDs don't really care about Dragon Boss. Like, outside of Blue ID, it's just kind of like a... It's just XP, that's how I view it. And we have a good mind, so we get Heavenly HP, which is relevant. And not a lot of people get anything relevant on Fall Off anyway. You know, on certain IDs, so it's like, we might as well do that. Actually, I might be thinking of Red ID for that one. <laughs> I love the penalties. Yeah, get the 51 penalties. Let's go. Avoid healing. This one's not too bad for this room. But as I said before, this quest really favors uh, traps. Just because uh, it also has a very generous sprinkling of healing circles. We haven't come across one yet. But if they're all backloaded, I'm okay with that. Hey, look at that! Dango finding a, just a casual spread needle on yellow ID. Godlike. Just casual, you know, and you know, potential in-game item. All good. I guess the real thing I never really sat there and thought about, is it actually worth doing blue ID on this quest? Like technically you could get Heaven Strikers here. Holy Ray from Dragon. Blue ID gets a whole assortment of other random junk. TP Saber. That's something I'm gonna have to check later, actually. <laughs> Avoid death on forest, that's the- that is the freeze challenge. Yeah, there's like a decent amount of tallows and barbels, so like, for character IDs, or section IDs I mean, that care about it, like four or five IDs are pretty strong here. So personally for me, I just look to see if they have an okay worm boss or an okay mind boss, and if they don't, yeah, they have something to make up for it, and honestly, Yellow ID has so many Ubers, I'm kind of okay with it. Like, technically, you have, like, decent chance of, like, Swordsman lore on different IDs here, because there is a pretty good chance you will fight at least 20 or 30 Del Sabers. And a lot of uh, IDs have things on the Merlin, for example, for Spread Needle. So I think any of those are pretty solid. I don't think we've gotten a single healing circle yet, which is kind of funny. I'm almost out of freeze traps due to that, unfortunately. I have to start playing conservatively here. That must mean they're all backloaded, which is unfortunate. I don't think I missed a room yet, because we didn't do the mines that has it, we didn't do the forest that has it, and we haven't done the ruins that has it yet either. But now we're almost at boss time. So I'd recommend as a ranger, if you're doing this quest, I love how they spawned dead, that was funny. <laughs> Team was outputting so much damage, they were still in the transportation animation. Teleporting in. Poor enemies. But you can see, like, it's not XP we, and we're getting almost 150 XP a second. Like, this quest is, like, genuinely really good if you're trying to level. So I'm gonna put on Spread Needle. The reason that I want to do this is that if we get Vault Op, I can face to the right very quickly. And if it's not, like, it's one of these bosses, then I could just switch to Cannon Rouge. It's just the option select. Like, I could just go into both. And that's why I like Ranger for this, because I don't need any setup for it. But we're having Oops All Cannon Rouge. There we go. We're gonna Cannon Rouge its brains out. Power of Cannon Rouge compels you. Goodbye, Tamerle. Oh, Cannon Rouge, you're so good. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll reassess this to see if uh, other IDs are really good. I just really like Yellow ID in particular, just because it has such strong drops across every enemy. And while it is a little bit of a shame that it doesn't get rare enemies, because I think it's actually even stronger if you include the rare enemies, um, it's still pretty good. So the drawback of no rare enemies does mean like you're never gonna do this run for Frozen Shooter. But honestly, it's like... If you're gonna play Frozen Shooter, you're gonna be doing Trails Ego. Like, just be real. Like, if you're doing this quest, you're not doing this quest for Frozen Shooter. 
You might do it for a red handgun while casually getting other items, maybe. That's what we're doing here. Sadly, no red handgun, though. That's damage, though. Hmm. Lead him. Wow, we still didn't get one to reset our traps. That's kind of brutal, actually. Very, very brutal. Although, no, 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 no. We still, there, there is a caves one, but we haven't gotten that one yet, I don't think. It's in, like, the wide open room. So knowing which rooms have your, uh, healing circles are good, because they don't spawn until all the enemies are dead. I took damage. I've shamed the chat. This is also one of those quests where, honestly, I think I would recommend when you're at the end of the game, just bring in PB Create. I think genuinely you could get a Milo Eula chain if you aren't using charge. So even if you're playing like not super optimal, I think there's just so many ways you could abuse it. Like this is going to be like a solid 15 minute run as an example. I don't know what the context is. All I see is there is a Shrek icon in the corner of my screen. I'm assuming it's the Shrek soundtrack for some reason. I don't know what that has to do with Bomberman or why that's in the recommended, but we're here now, chat. I will briefly look at it. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's the entire Shrek movie. Okay, that's okay. Or why not? On, load up the video, please. Come on, play the music. Yeah, we can go behind, I think, the waterfall. I think it I think it might have a healing circle, but I'm not gonna bother. It's like too much of a walk. Brutal. Another one with no uh healing circle. Rip. Usually I get them within nine, so I was playing to use like all but like four traps on the ninth floor. And then I realized, oh no, it's not happening. Yeah, this quest is just really solid for XP. And that and that's the thing I also don't see mentioned in there at all. They're like, oh, we're only gonna run this for, you know, like playing for falls, which I, I one don't agree with at all. But it's just one of those things where like this quest is like genuinely good. If you're a section ID that can't do falls, this is like one of your best quests on episode one. Maybe she can see some proper credit for this. Wow. Wow, we got the only forest one left that doesn't have healing circle. That is brutal. And I don't think I'm gonna get a restock this run. At least it's not gonna be relevant when we get it. So sad. And the thing about this quest too, that I think is not mentioned in there at all, it lets every single area has boxes. So this is also ends up being kind of like a box hunt. And I think some IDs are like really, really good at the box hunt here. I can't believe this. We got it. We got the we got the last ruins one that also does not have a healing circle. That is brutal. Damn. That means the last two are probably gonna be healing circle rooms. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because they even talk about, like, you know, running, running, quote unquote, running things for falls. And they have another quest on the list, which is interesting to me. I'm not sure how I feel about it. We'll give it a shot. Unbelievable! <laughs> we didn't get a single one! Well, that is... I think this is the most unlucky I have ever been in this quest. Holy... We got we got the god pattern of no healing turn circles. Holy, is it really just the final two areas have them? There's four rooms, by the way, for clarity, from what I recall. There's one in forest, two. There's one in caves. There's one in mines. And there are one in ruins. We got zero of them so far. It's actually insane actually insane. I think we're not gonna get the reset. I wanted to show that off. Wow. <laughs> it's probably gonna put us in, like, ruins out of spite. It probably is. It's gonna give us a hard area. We've got no freeze traps. 
completely brutal. Normally it is much more forgiving than this. So I think there's like 25-ish rooms I think it could be. We got literally all but the one <laughs> ones that have them. That's pretty bad luck. But anyway, we're just gonna go ahead and blitz through. So yeah, from an XP standpoint, I mean, as long as you have somebody with Cannon Rouge, Quest cleans up, like, super fast. We actually did not get a single room with Healing Circle. Hm. Unless I forgot about one of the ones in Mines. Maybe, maybe one of the ones in Mines also had it as a backup. But I did not see it if it did spawn. Brutal. There's like a long hallway room in mines. That's the one I usually use the healing circle on. And for caves, there's also one where it's like a big square room. Yeah, that's very rare to complete this without coming across one of those rooms. Uh, so we have a decent odd of this being full up. It's a 50-50. Where is Dragon Boss? Never mind. Irrelevant. Yeah, this quest is super, super solid for XP, and I, I don't think it has, like, the same requirements to clear, like, some of the other super XP quests. But I think for newer players, honestly, as long as you can handle Vault Op and Ruin, which are not the hardest of areas, so you'll probably be in, like, your 120 to 140 range, depending on your gear. It ends up just being a lot of fun with people. Like, Dango's probably the closest to the level that you would probably be for this quest. For, for what it's worth, the challenge here is avoid taking damage using Zerakia. <laughs> Which is completely funny and irrelevant, because you just have Cannon Rouge. But it, you can you can end up getting deleted there, which is funny. So we did not pass the challenge. But that's fine. As soon as somebody walks into the other challenge area, and this is why I like the quest, you're just allowed to go again without needing to go to the quest counter. So we'll probably move on to another quest, because Murphy needs to go. But normally, you just go right back here, and you're right back here, right back into the quest. So it eliminates going back to the lobby, and you could restock really quickly here. I just think this quest is really well done in general, and I do think people sleep on this quest in general. So this one is a hard confirm. I think this quest is actually really good for uh, generic rares. I think it's good for V101 plus Ubers. I don't think it's worth it for bosses. Bosses are kind of like a nice side thing. If you have like a strong worm or dragon, it's not too bad. But now I'm actually curious. I'm just gonna very briefly look at the drops on blue ID to see if it would be worth running this. So you can't get Hilda Tour, which is the big reason to play Blue ID there. Talo, Ajito, 1975, Holy Ray, it's okay. Demolition Comet is okay. Jaya, Jaya is good, but like I'm not gonna run the quest for it. Asteron Belt from Worm Boss is good. Jaya and Guild Chick is fine with Lava's Cannon, I think is okay. They get um, Sorcerer's Right Arm, which I think is okay. I think it's okay for people that don't have Magical Peas. Monkey King Bar is there. Technically, if you really want Book of Hidogata, it's there. I, they get Heavenly Battle, which is okay. Guardiana Heaven Striker is fine. So they're, they're not like the worst combo there. I just don't know if I'd run it for that. Like, their strongest one that I would run would probably be something in Ruins. And even then, Ruins is just kind of mediocre. So, unless you're just really hard obsessed with Jaya, I probably wouldn't do it. But I was curious if that would end up being anything interesting. But yeah, potentially getting Swordsman lore from the different IDs can be pretty strong here. Yeah, I was looking to see if Pink ID had anything fun in here. They're okay. I, I just think this is just kind of like the end-all be-all, honestly, for Yellow ID. I think it's one of their best quests that people sleep on. This is like, what area do you want to run? And the answer is all of them. I don't think there's an area Yellow ID is really weak in other than like just purely from an enemy count perspective. But given that every area has like three or four core endgame drops and each area has an uber, it's kind of strong. It's kind of strong. So I will say that I like yellow anymore. I'll leave it at that. And then finally... 
So thank you, Murphy, for playing with us. Remote Battery, if you want to hop in, we're going to be doing a Falls run, but not one that you would expect. Let's go back to the list and take a look. Let's see if chat agrees with this opinion. This one, this one is also interesting. Maximum attack for stage 1C, but you play till falls. So normally people play this quest for lilies, and this is what they're saying here in the description. Um, due to the raw number of enemies, they're saying that statistically you end up getting more PDs playing this quest than doing TTF. So I guess the question is, what IDs would you potentially run into this quest with? So it is interesting. I did actually forget Falls was here, because I never run this quest to completion, so I feel called out on that one. It technically gives you tickets, which is strong, so that's like an added bonus as you play. So I'm, I'm all for tickets. Uh, but looking at the counts, it has a lot of lilies, which is why you normally play purple ID. Otherwise, like, the counts are kind of lowish. Like, 17 Sinnoh beats are okay. Yeah, I was just looking to see if they had any interesting drops here. Not really on this enemy type. Unless I wanted to play blue ID here, which I don't. That would be that. I guess I would just bring in green ID again. Because normally the core things for mines are beats, or Sinnoh beats, Sinnoh golds, garands. And they're okay here. There's a high number of candidines, which is good for purple ID. But you're not going to run purple ID in the falls, if that's what your intent is. We're just doing a quick look at some of the drops here. Again, like yellow ID having V101 there is just kind of a solid thing. I think it slightly favors green ID when it comes to these things. Technically, you can get the Duck 2000 bazooka from them. So I guess we'll try to run this green ID. Just looking to see if there's any other things that I'm forgetting that people would normally run it for. Yeah, lame to Argent chances as you play the other one is funny. So getting getting Excalibur while also getting V101 Heaven Punisher chances of Gino's on the other quest is pretty strong. I, I guess I'll just stick to Green ID. I didn't see if they had a recommendation from their standpoint. Yeah, they don't really mention which ID they run here, so I'll just switch back into the other ranger for now. I'm assuming that we don't normally run red ID in most of those, that's why I was like double checking. I'm like, I don't think it's worth it. Red ID mines is kind of bad. Like, unless you really want the Heart of Sorcerer Cane, there's just easier farms for Ajito. Like, they're only dropped there. Oh, we're done with the Neo Bomberman soundtrack already? That was really short. We'll play Panic Bomberman next. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just fine. It, it's one of those ones where, like, I guess Red ID Ruins is good, but it's like... I don't know. I'm double-checking Caves one more time. Red ID Caves getting slimes, lava cannons isn't terrible. But I think if there's going to be rare enemies, I'm just thinking if that would change my opinion on this run. I don't think so. So I'm leaning towards green ID, unless I feel like playing a cast. So there's no forest, so that's out. Bad red ID, but then potentially a good ruins. Maybe it's worth it? Maybe? <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I guess I could bring in Red ID. Hmm. You know what? Let me bring in Red ID. I'll bring in a I'll bring in a cast. I think that would be useful. A cast that could still deal with balls. I I do actually genuinely like Red ID. Uh, ruins a lot because it is spread needle god techniques which are nice to have disco brave mans red rings 
and uh, psycho wands, like the spread needle, like it is really good at the end. I don't know if I care about the green ID drops so much. The downside is that their other drops are mediocre, but I mostly don't care about Shuren. I guess the question is how badly do I lose out if I do that? How many on average Grass Assassins are there? 28, but then there's 14 slimes, which would be times 4? So there would be more slimes than there are Grass Assassins, so as long as I don't insta-kill them, it could be fun to dupe. I'll just dupe them. We're gonna make sure we have everything we need. So we have Dark Flow, a point draining item with 60 hit, Charge Disca, Jaya's, Twin Blaze, and yeah, we're ready for this quest. I, I could see an argument for playing Green ID here. I think I'll mix it up and do a little bit of Red ID. But if there's anybody else that wants to hop in, we're going to just do a quick Falls run, but in an unconventional way. So I'm thinking between. Um, I think the fire traps would speed up the run slightly in exchange for like a slightly slower falls. Although actually even not really because I have 1301 ATP, that's not even bad. So we give up a- we have a slightly weaker caves and an okay mines. We're checking that slicer, yeah pretty much. To have a solid ruins, which is okay. We'll give chat another moment or so before we get started. Yes, I... Yeah, sadly, we, we don't end up fighting the boss, because Red ID gets Heavenly HP. Stink Shield, I'm sorry, Stink Shield was on Yellow ID, which is actually really good to get. Um, otherwise, we just kind of get okay items on Red ID. There's not too, too many ruins enemies. So probably not as favored to play Red ID here, but that's fine. So I guess we'll get started with the run. I think what I need to do is find a quest that's really fun to dupe slimes in. Maybe we'll do a slime dupe reset quest at some point. Should be 1C. I guess at some point this character will probably switch over to using 13. For now, I'll just do this. See if I could dupe a couple of them. Oop, I hit their spawn point. Damn, I thought I was far enough away. Rip the slime dupe. Yeah, I guess with the spawns it's a little awkward to slime dupe here. Mm. Oh well. Too late now to change my mind. Got no Suka with hit. It's disappointing. I mean, we do kill a lot of enemies in this quest. Green ID, I think, is pretty solid here. And the options are only really, like, because you need red ring, it can only really be, what is it, red, 
green, viridian, white, about it. I mean, you're not going to be playing. I, I, I guess in theory you could sky ID here. I don't think sky ID has like crazy, crazy drops comparatively. It is a shame though, because there are so many lilies, but it doesn't line up with the false drop. Like, normally if you're just doing lily quests, you'd just be playing purple, period. Not bother with other IDs. I guess we'll see how long it takes comparatively, because we are on a time limit, let's notice. Still have a general sense of how long we're taking. Definitely agree, I like Unlist. Don't agree with the reasoning or the ID, but I do think that quest is very good and people don't normally play that a lot. And a lot of it has to do with just the fact that it's random rares. But honestly, like once you have multiple characters, it's like, are you really upset to get more V101s or Excaliburs while going for Ubers? I don't think most people are. I think if people go in with that mindset, you'll like, okay, I have low chance of Uber, but I can just get all my standard drops. Normally we go in the next room and then we reset on like a purple run. And honestly, I haven't been past that point in so long. I couldn't even tell you what the rest of the rooms are like. This we'll find out in real time. We'll, just, we'll mow them down with Last Swan, which is a fantastic gun. I love this weapon. If I had a better slicer, I probably could have sliced. Oh, I can't hit them because they're frozen. Okay, Dango will stunlock them with Prisand. No need to worry about them too heavily. Oh boy. <laughs> Time to move. Enigma says you can take the four slot. Nice, nice. And we have one last quest in the list. It's kind of an unofficial numbering. That quest is probably the other hard quest to do on the run. Where it requires us to play free mode seabed. If you're willing to play through that, that's fine. Maybe we'll get parasitic gene flow right at the end. So we're gonna be a little while since we just started the quest here. Yeah, maybe I could charge just to these. Speed it up a little. Up a ramp launcher though. I mean, I guess if I'm willing to burn money, I, I think the charge disc is fun. It's not quite 13 with buffs, but it'll do. Casual, casual 1400 damage, full screen. You know, as you do. So yeah, I think so far this quest list, I think it's a, I think it's an interesting quest list. I think newer players will have a lot of trouble with Sweep Up Operation 9. The rest of these quests, nice. Good highlight of these quests. I don't know if like the, the best for items, because most people will only play for items. There we go, nice little 
full damage there. These guys are ultra dead. Thank you, Charge Disca. That was unfortunate that the Ricochet did not hit the Brands there. The first part did, and that did big damage. This is just less swan territory, right? Too much. Oh, hello. At least my single target damage is really high. That's always that's always a plus side. <laughs> my challenge is like, oops, surprise, triple Barans. Hello. I'm gonna preempt an attack there so I can just land the heavies. Checkmate, Sinnoh Red. Honestly, I think spamming fire traps here is what I should be doing. That's so much damage if people can hit them. Oh, I thought I got a PD. That would have been exciting. Oh, I got confused. That sucks. Free me from this confusion. There we go. I'm not spending soul atomizer on that, I'm sorry. I was in more of a hurry, maybe. a fast kill. Power material. I'm assuming the Sinos are down here. Oh no, they're not. Ooh. They're about to take some big damage from this. Grip Dango. Dango died so the party could live. I see the switch. Got the switch. Lots of central spawn enemies. Not sure how I feel about that. Both of them are on the other side. That's unfortunate. Again, less slon damage. They can basically kill them in a combo. Not too bad with the Lord. Just an empty room. That is so rude. That is that is the height of rudeness. I'm gonna go ahead and charge disc of them. Oh! The damage though. I believe in Dango healing. There we go. I got a mag blast. So we, we could do the super mag blast if we want to, honestly. Using less swan just guarantees that I get it so fast. I'm gonna go ahead and bait them into this. Dango safe. Operation Protect Dango. The big scary robot wants to murder Fomar. Uh, use Vice here. For TB savers. Kind of hoping those were PDs. So I see the raw number of chances we could get PDs. It just sadly isn't happening. But we'll see if we get lucky and ruins it all or not. Yeah, but like, one's a Laura combo kill. That's not too bad. Yeah, red ring definitely helps with the accuracy here. Room. Oh, it's just very delayed. So I was like, did I mess something up? Question mark. I think at some point we'll do a. Uh... Oh, I had to. I had. To... I had to panic, Mag Blast. I had to panic. <laughs> Rip me. I needed the iframes. It didn't quite work though. I almost survived. I dodged like four shots that way. 
almost survived. Fortunately, I built meter pretty quickly. Just 65 enemies down. Okay, making progress. By Sinnoh Blue. By other Sinnoh body blocking the Varans. Oh, hit me for damage. Yeah, build me meter again. Appreciate that. Build me more meter. I don't get why these... I don't get why this room is so slow. Like, what are we waiting on? Honest question. Like, why, why was there like a 20 second... Why? Why was there like a 20 second gap? For what purpose? Is there a specific spot we had to stand? A weird decision. Yeah, that, that spawn is terrible. I don't know what that's all about. We're gonna go ahead and go to the next area. <laughs> I was like, did we have to hit a switch and I just missed it? No. <clears throat> Start the next room in a moment. I want the team to catch up a little bit. Should be good. Or Indie Belra. Well, I'm gonna go full screen. Way the team can enter the room safely. Well, that was such a clean turnaround. That was such a clean turn. I'm so impressed with that. I didn't even get hit by the thing when I turned around either. Uh, I probably want to use Beast Trap here if I can. Whenever there's this many targets, like maybe if we had three rangers, I would consider not going to use Trapping that, but. Is dealt these on level 29 of that. Um, let's see if I can freeze trap them to hit them more consistently. We'll see. Mostly just don't want the claw going up and down as I hit it with Slicer. Not that it's a threat. Seven freeze traps left for the other annoying enemies. Do that. The sorcerer should potentially have Psycho Wand. Everything else is not bad. My multi-hit doesn't matter with less ones, because it does so much damage. Yeah, now if you want to Gafoe, it doesn't matter. This character's damage is so high, it doesn't matter. Just to stop the charge. like this long empty hallway. I mean, this is the typical room in the falls, but I'm not a fan of it. Okay, we're just here with our single target damage. Ooh, this kind of room? Really? How about that? Fortunately, I left some freeze traps for this kind of situation. Otherwise, I would not be doing much. are on that side. Yeah, I could see, for example, if we didn't have a force. I could see that this quest does build mag blast pretty consistently. So I would see, like, the non... a non-force party of, like, one raw moral or something, and then, like, Q cast, two raw casts. Very interesting. Like, just enough that you have debuffs on the enemy. I guess technically Ramar could debuff the boss. Challenge mode items. So the door opened up over here. Which I think just spawns the next enemy wave. Warning me, the server is going to shut down in two hours, which is fine. We'll, we'll conclude the video before then. It's a shame those things have hell resistance. You know how much more fun those would have been if I could have just held them out of existence? Stupid episode 1 EDKs. Oh. Oh, we we're gonna spawn over there, but nope. Oops, all claws.
There we go. Now we get rewarded. You. You. Sorcerer full screen. All the freeze traps. Still got two freeze traps left. I think I've been using them okay. Assuming we're gonna have to go to the other side and clear out another wave, so I'm gonna leave some for that. Sadly, no rares yet. So I'm assuming at some point this door will open and this will spawn the last big wave. Okay, so I'm gonna volunteer to go through. Got 12 minutes to beat falls. It's fine. Get out of here, sorcerer. Probably want to put a freeze trap. Oh, never mind. Freeze trap already used. I was gonna say that's one of the times I was saving the freeze trap for. I got one left. If I end with one, that's also fine. At least I feel like most of the major waves I use the trap. We're just gonna go ahead and eliminate the enemy here. Chaos Springer. I'm gonna put my freeze trap down. Hopefully this hits a couple. Ooh, I was out of range. Oh, I slid slightly out of range. That's unfortunate. But they were still in range. That was a bad freeze trap. I think this is probably the last wave. Okay, so sadly no rares. No PDs either, which is a shame. I'm at 95 meter, so I almost had Mag Blast again. Sadly, not enough to get it. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at 95. I was so close to getting it. See, Chad, if I had just been running PB Create, I would have had it. This is what I'm talking about, Chad. This is the exact scenario where if I had PB Create as my final slot item as the situational, I would have had it. I mean, I had it earlier in the run, technically. I built up almost 200 meter, but it could have been more. So I will get... Was the false pattern different? I think that was a different false pattern. There wasn't anything lined up in front of me. Huh. Weird. Well, on the plus side, I'm at like 96 meter. If we really need to, we can mag blast the final form. For me, fortunately, it doesn't matter what I do here. I do need to lose health at some point. Unless I just want to last swan the boss, which I think is fun. It's technically like a dark flow here, but... We'll see. I'll, I'll play it safe. Lore. So it just got my blast. I have invincibility, so if I had gone Dark Flow, I might have been able to hit the boss here with Dark Flow. But Last Swan is also so strong that it doesn't matter. Yeah, See, so I, I still took like 900 damage. I don't. Oh, I was gonna say I'd only get punished if the boss does that specific move. Okay, so I did get punished technically, but it doesn't matter. Our damage is so high. Um. Do I mag blast? Maybe when it goes in the sky? If it targets me with laser chat, I'm just gonna type using twins. How's that? So much damage there. That was good damage. Ooh, almost dead. Targeting me? Oh. Because <laughs> I was going to do that to dodge the ability. I'll come over near Dango. Operation Protect Dango. Oh, I'm about to take big damage. Rip me. 
heaven I go. <laughs> You're not gonna rest at my damage, it's too high. <laughs> oh my, I do like 2,000 a combo, it was over for me. Maybe if I get more levels, I'll survive that. <laughs> Rip me, GG. Dango doesn't want to look at me. He's like, oh. How dare you die and fall, so I'm disgusted. So it took about 22 minutes. So like, oh, it has an automatic teleport. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, no box, no box, and hmm, yeah, that's kind of disappointing. So I think I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna disagree about this quest. I don't, I don't think I would run this for falls. It takes twice as long. I mean, we get tickets. But do the tickets make up for the no box rares? And the kind of, like, mediocre mines? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like if mines had, like, more, uh, Sinnohs, like, if they had, like, 35 or 40 Sinnohs, like, of one individual type, I think I would have liked it more, because that would have been, like, the B101 chances. But only having, like, 19 in a run, it's like... I feel that the time it would take for you to do a well-scripted TTF, you would kill the same number of Sinnohs. Right, chat? I mean, if you- if we took about 22 minutes here, and the average TTF is about 11.30 or so when we have a good team. Yeah. Then I just feel like you would fight more Sinnohs. And you would get free Frozen Shooter chances. I don't know. I think I'm going to disagree about this one. I think the beginning is fantastic for uh, Psycho 1. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely one of the best. But... I don't know. I don't think I could get behind doing this run. I could see what they mean where there's like more enemies for PDs, but I, I don't think I'm at the point where all I'm doing is PD grinding. So I, I guess if you're looking at it purely from like a PD perspective, maybe that makes more sense. I'm just looking for endgame drops. I'm not even looking for like I'm hunting one item. Like I'm okay with exploring a whole bunch of checks, but I don't know. I wasn't really sold on that. I, I, I think if they also didn't have those, like, long wait rooms and mines, or if there's a way to speed that up, because we were waiting, we wasted, like, easily 30 seconds, if not 40 seconds, on doing nothing, and that definitely feels bad in a quest. So finally, chat, we have just Seabed. <laughs> so we'll do showcasing this one more time. So, they don't mention it on their official list, but if I go to the next page, they mention that the real inspiration for it is just Seabed without a quest. So, as long as you can do Parasitic Gene Flow, it's fine. So, we'll take a look at this. So, Edward Digma, you're more than welcome to join in on this. We're basically just going to choose an ID that has Parasitic Gene Flow. I don't know what the enemy count is on Seabed. I'm assuming anything like Blue ID, Purple, Viridian... Red, I think, is also fine. I don't know, Chad. Is there an I, I mean, I could just play as this character. I mean, I like Yun Chang. I don't really want V501. I guess if I had to choose these, I don't know how many Del Beaters there normally are for Psycho One. Blue ID is pretty solid. I think I'd rather play Red ID into it, unless I'm leveling my other character. I guess I could level my other character and make it blue ID. Yun Chang plus Sanba Psycho One is a pretty good combination. But otherwise, like, I'm not gonna play Seabed to get Heaven Striker, even if this had Parasitic Gene Flow. So yeah, I think Yellow ID is also okay if I wanted Zamba, but let's do Blue ID just to mix it up a little bit, I guess. Red ID also would have been fine normally. Let's go ahead and switch back into the game. <laughs> I mean, sometimes just Seabed is good enough. 
I don't know all the tricks with the drop techniques, so normally what can happen is if you get a claw type weapon, you can ledge drop on certain platforms to go through. I almost never do those strategies, I barely remember them. I know they exist. I don't know which rooms are helpful because I haven't run enough normal seabed to state that. I'm assuming every time you can do it, it is useful. But I think for the sake of exploration, we could kind of try to denote this for future use. Because I do have claw weapons. I think people will end up getting claws from uh, the Easter stuff, because I think you could get free type claw weapons from that. Well, free in the sense you still pay eggs, but... Yeah, let's bring in a Hunter, because at least then it's just damage. Because we, we don't need to worry about, like, Cannon Rouge for the boss, for example. So we'll do the honorary quest of, uh, to do this. I looked at that and I was like, hmm. Was I just using Heavenly Power? Because she's at uh, max accuracy. Maybe she. Yeah, she probably was just at max AP. We'll wait for Nigma to do the quest. I'm bringing a character with decent ATP at least. The Purisol, Vulcans, Less Swans. That's all I really need. Ooh, level 95 character, Brave Soul. If there's anything else I really want to bring there, but the other character having a 60 hit vice is very funny to me. Should probably give that to the Hugh Cast over the Hugh Seal, but honestly, it is really funny watching her step for level accuracy. If I want to bring anything special, I guess I should probably bring. I guess in theory, I could bring my 502. Oh, I did get a- oh! I thought I, I miscounted earlier. Okay, so I have one V801 to give to my rangers later. And then I'll keep my V502 open. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sort so that I always have Hell Handgun at the top. And then between Charge Vulcan, Gunnier, and Gearsol and Last Swan, I should have enough options for everything. So two forces, a ranger, and a hunter. You can bring the humor for humorous memes. Oh, you already did the humor on that. Yeah, ATP is probably appreciated. I mean, this this could be finally Dango's parasitic gene flow. It would be something to do it on free free mode seabed, which is really funny. Like, if you were to look at the wiki right now. No joke, it says like the number one quest for Okaflow is free seabed, because <laughs> all the other quests are so bad. I think that kind of speaks to episode two. I think some of the some of the episode two quests are good, and a lot of them are really terrible. I see people rag on episode four. Just kind of okay. It scared me, I'm not gonna lie. We, we could just go there, fortunately. We don't have to wait for a quest thing. I guess for people that don't know where that is, just put Ryuker down. You get to decide, chat, how you reach free seabed. You've gotta be kidding me. I don't, don't I have V502 on? I do. Wow. Game, please. I was gonna say, team, I hope you're not waiting at the quest counter. Gonna be very disappointed. So I guess it's kind of nice in the sense that other people can just always set up for free seabed and people can drop in, drop out. So I think that's a room where you can let's drop, maybe. Save like a little walk here. Without sequence breaking, because this this walk is pretty pointless. Yeah, I think when there's a room like this, you can put through. So in my pauper guide, I list a whole bunch of items that allow you to do it. Don't have many on me. Like, Katana is like a very common one. Female Fist, I don't think can do it. Fall definitely can. 
Males, males have a couple of easy options that they run anyway that I can flip through, but for Hugh New World, without looking at the proper guide, I honestly don't recall. I usually bring Claw for it. I'm gonna go south. I found item. I mean, I'll check. Bo seabed boxes are still good. But I'll take seabed boxes, listen. So to me, that's not even like a time loss. That's good. I, I want to see seabed boxes. They should be pretty good. Oh, this. Oh, there's a poison switch. Oh, we missed it. Fortunate. I see it now, but I'm not going back for it. I'm now missing my huge Casil's accuracy. I feel like I'm getting punished. This is what you get for not playing cast here. I do like cast here. I don't like cast solo here. Ooh, going back for it. Nice. I'll put down a warp in case you just want to come back to us. Denozoas have spawned in the room somewhere. I have found them. you with ATP, whatever. Left or right? I guess I'll go left. First thing that happens, Chab will just assist me. Found boxes. I'm really good at finding the boxes. Let it be known, Chad. I mean, that's a, that was an easy box check. But so far, 12 boxes. You see that. Yeah, I do think we should probably run free seabed more. I I don't know if I consider this an unappreciated quest, though. I think it fails by definition of being a quest. And most people know that this is the best way to do um, overflow. So I think it fails both category definitions, but we'll include it as an honorable mention, I suppose. There you go, Chad. You should feel proud. I'm actually bringing Hell to Seabed. Although, if I just play Hue Cast, I don't even need to do it. That was my thought process earlier. Like, what if I just kill them in a combo anyway? So maybe, I'll, maybe I'll make another Hue Cast ID that can specifically farm Parasitic Gene Flow and maybe also do bosses. It might be like a red ID. Well, I don't want to double up on red ID. I think about what ID they would have to be. I already have Hugh Casil for that, and she's a lot of fun. Rip. Selection here. My attack went through the enemy, that was unfortunate. A couple Del Beaters here and there. Just free cycle one chance it. Let's see, is this item? There's a switch here. Switch to. Cool, I disabled a laser cape that I don't know the purpose of yet. Well, I hope that was important. It could, in theory, I guess, unlock a healing circle later. I'm imagining that's what it did. Hmm. To see the healing circle. But I don't see if... But I don't see if there was... No, there wasn't a laser cape there. What, what did the laser cape thing open? Hmm. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Unless we needed that to progress. So I see in parameters fighting over there. I'm curious what's over here. Is this just item? 
Let's learn today, chat. Oh, the laser gate open boxes. Okay. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Unlike that small detour, we checked eight boxes. Happy with that. In theory, it could be a high hit ray gun that I can't identify. Parameter, meanwhile, putting in all the work. Meanwhile, I'm like, look, pretty box. <laughs> That's about right. Parameter hard carrying me right now. Go this way. Uh... There you go. Why, hello there, random, uh, Sino. Teleported. What a jerk. Yeah, like that. Oh, so, so Chad, if you want to know where I keep memeing on episode two, look at our XP per second. So if you want to know why when we're playing uh, TTF, or not TTF, we're playing episode four on hard mode, and I'm like, look, it's better XP than when I get an ultimate. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> With episode two specifically. I'm making fun of Seabed. The chat was curious why I kept saying that when we have like terrible XP per second. It could be worse. You could be doing free mode seabed. You will get no XP this way. Like, we're, we've are we gotten 41 XP a sec. I guarantee you, you could get more in hard mode in most quests. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Maybe it's competitive with hard mode forest. <laughs> the chat's checking something out over there. Oh no. Oh no, Del Depths. Please no. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> I regret my decisions. I don't want to go this way. Where's chat going? Chat went this way and then decided to. Oh, it was a box check. Okay. Oh, there's more than one room to go into. Interesting. Rip and Parameter. Yeah, I saw that other room, and I was like, unless we really have to do that room, I really prefer not to fight the two Delofs that spawn. Seems pretty horrendous. We'll find out, though. Here's another room we could drop down and save time. I think any room that kind of looks like this, in theory. Get some ledges. We'll just continue to explore. I don't know the right way to go through Seabed. I very rarely play this in free mode. I like the traps are immune to the pause trick. I mean, this feels like we're going the right way. But we'll see, I suppose. I saw that other room and I'm like, mm mm. Oh boy, Del Depths. The other thing I gotta learn, chat. I'm going to put that in our guide when I learn how to do it properly. I want to learn how to insta-kill the Del Depths. There's a way to kill them before they move. And it requires like a very specific timing. I'm going to- my goal is sometime this year I'm going to learn how to deal with this. I don't- that was an amazing Rebarda. That was a Rebarda out of 10 freeze. Hell yeah, chat. I'm dealing with that. Because there, there is like a brief moment when they're on the floor that I've seen people burst them, but I don't know if it's like specific weapon. But it makes seabed like a lot more tolerable. I think I got a charge bulk in this because I just don't have the accuracy. Yeah, the fact that they're frozen and I only had a 93% chance to land hit with a 50 hit weapon. Call the switch out. Found the boxes again. I'm, I'm good at this. Ooh, is on level 29? I, I will actually go pick that up. Or it didn't drop here. Maybe it dropped in the other room. Little check. There we go. Because on 29 is worth picking up. That's actually a good technique. 
So I guess technically we earned something in the run so far. Oh yeah, Dango, I meant to ask, was the spread needle any good? Did it have, like, a percentage? So, let's take a look at the map. So that other room... The other room that I went to, I think would have connected there sooner. So the room that I didn't want to do, I think would have led us here faster. Interesting. Assuming it tied up with that big room. Episode 2 likes to hide the doorways, so it's always kind of hard to tell. Nice level up. It's a dark room. Cute. That feeling when it's frozen and you still miss. And 25 babies. Oh, okay. Unfortunate. Over here. Switches. Found the boxes again. This is it before. I feel like I'm pretty good at finding the boxes. This feels like a real path. Team is splitting up to look for the Team is splitting up to look for the real path. This feels like more of a maze. This feels like the wrong way. I'm just looking to see if there's anything in here. Nothing to do in here. I'm not even sure why that room exists, to be honest with you. Get the poison switch. Nice. Let's learn today. Imagine if this just goes back to the item room that I was looking at. There's no warps on this side, right? Okay. That's how you reach the treasure. I don't think there's anything else to do. There was a room that went further over, but it didn't seem like anything happened if we went there. So I found the, de the detour. Just checking that wall to make sure it's real. Chat finding an invisible enemy there. That was interesting. I wonder how long it was there. Yeah, like... So this the room's only purpose is to come down here and get ambushed. Well, wow. rude. There's a Morphos. I mean, I'm happy to find a Morphos. Listen, Chad. Free free Young Chang Chang chances. I'll take those. So all this just loops back into the other treasure room. I guess I'll go back for the grinder. Sadly, we are burning out the music really quickly. That's the problem with the spin-offs. You just kind of burn through them almost instantly. Give me a second as I look up another soundtrack. We did that one already, so let's do this one. Bummerman B. Damon. Interesting. Anyway, let's go find out where Chad went. Oh, uh, they probably went up here. special, please. <laughs> Missing a 99% chance to hit, 100% chance to hit purely due to hell chance. That is brutal. Don't beat her hitting me mid combo is so bad. There we go. Darn you, Don't beat her. Like, where the heck is the target? 
Hello, Sinozoa. They will not let me open box in peace. This quest feels very vanilla. Nice one, Dango. It's all this nonsense. Let me... Go melee them. Nine. That feeling where they teleport next to you and you can't turn because they're li literally right next to you is the worst feeling. Eight episode two sometimes, chat. Let's deal with this. Cause that was messing up my targeting as well. So I just hit Max Magbus. Hello. Double Morphos. Could blend fire into that room. Felt rewarded. Oh, I actually landed that. That's kind of nice. Oh my gosh, chat. We passed 50 XP a second. We're in, like, early very hard mode now. We did it. What is this hallway? <laughs> Rico Box Del Beater? Holy. Th that's a vanilla pattern? That's... Hmm. Alright, chat, that's... Hmm. And that's a choice. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Penumbral Surge 5? What is this hallway? It was horrible. I'm glad we don't see that in other quests. Oh, we actually made it here. Interesting. I'm trying to land some hell shots, but I don't think it's gonna happen. No, it's not happening. Go back to the last one for a little bit. So, plus side, I have meter. We can't just go through that door now. Then there's the other path that team's going currently. Might as well as explore. Episode 2, where like 40% of the time you're in a hallway that doesn't exist on the minimap. Thanks, episode 2. Oh, this was just for boxes. That's fair. It's kind of like the waterfall secret in Ruin. I can't really fault it for that. Xenozoa. Wait, what? They spawn more enemies? That's rude. <laughs> right, chat? Wow. Oh, it's like, oh. Does, does thou wish to have treasure? Perish. <laughs> Just... Okay. It's not even like enough enemies to justify taking the treasure route. It's like just enough to annoy. Oh, <laughs> it's this hallway. Chad, I'm not waiting on this hallway. Screw this. I'm walking through the laser gate. I'm sorry. I'm not waiting on this. No, thank you. No, thanks. What the heck is this? Listen, Chad, I'm walking into it. I don't care. That's a dead end. This is apparently vanilla. Welcome to episode two. We've made these choices for some reason. All right, so I could come up here and open boxes. Something interesting from the boxes. Then I'm at another teleport point. What is this? All right, so I got a 50-50. Which one do I think goes towards items? I'm gonna go down first. I find this- okay, so there's a healing circle over here, by the way. It's on the southern path of one of the 50-50s. If you need trap refill, it's over there. I'll deal with the traps in the meantime. This- I found them the hard way. Oh no, one of them's not gelling. Good thing I healed. 
Sega was on something? Oh, for sure. Dad, I, I remember my time playing this without using quests in Episode 2. I remember this exactly. This is why I don't like Episode 2, Chad. If you're wondering where a lot of the bias came from, imagine playing on GameCube where you have, like, this is your option to go do Ogoflow, and Ogoflow gives no items of interest on, like, GameCube. It's, like, so terrible. And you have, like, the horrible split-screen nightmare that is Temple. It's basically unplayable for four-player co-op. Truly something. Like, those, those were choices that they chose to make for some reason. We're, we're, we're just gonna eliminate some paths. This feels like probably items. The warp. Why is there a warp? Oh no. Uh, well, we'll just keep going. <laughs> We've committed to our routes. Sinozoa is near me. I can't move. <laughs> That's how I know they're close to me. Oh boy. I'm gonna go and debuff one of them so you can actually find them as well. There they are. Teleport from this. Oh, I couldn't tell where he was. Noxious. There we go. Operation Save Dango is in effect. I'm really curious where this is leading us. Seabed is a weird place. Another long hallway. That's promising. Staring into the abyss. <laughs> Just there for <laughs> Seabed, please. Okay, we found the boss. So we managed to go the right way. I have no idea. Team's just like murdering stuff. I'm assuming they're near the item room. Yeah, it looks like they're in the item room, based off where they are on the map. They're gonna have to come back. Hella pipe is put down, but sadly that means that we might lose the mag blast for this boss. Dango, do you have meter? Got a hundred. I think they can't donate, so. Ooh. We'll, we'll do it, Dango. I'll just say twins. See, this is why we PP create. <laughs> See that, chat? Push the PP create agenda. Okay, Dango and I will be DPS. It'll be fun. The two hunters are here to DPS. So yeah, we'll let uh Edward Enigma will Zalore the boss while it's off screen. Heaven Striker from Imperameter will do decent damage, and hopefully my last swan hits decently well. I should probably actually swap into Charge Vulcan, actually for safety, just in case I whiff some hits. Better for me to do that, I got some time to swap. Oh, I did hit some shots there. Now it's better for me to use less one. Okay, I mean, that wasn't bad. It, that could have gone much worse. This is the phase I'm worried about. We're gonna, we're gonna believe in Dango's uh, Humor ATP. I'm gonna quit my Charge Vulcan. Hopefully, with the 50 hit, I can land a normal heavy special. I kind of botched my combo a little on the boss there. Hopefully, I'll make it up here. And this character gets red ring? Hmm. That'd be a relief. Oh, 
Honestly, that's... You know what? This is fine. Yeah, that's fine. So we didn't really need the super buffs. Interesting. I guess I'm just so unused to the DMC. And maybe it isn't even necessary to get super buffs on uh, RT now. That was really fast. One day, chat. This character will have Ren Ring, and I'll, I'll not miss my uh, Vulcan shot at the end. She has no accuracy booster shield, sadly. Ooh, actual boss. Actual boxes at the boss arena? I feel like I'm being spoiled now. I don't even know what they normally draw. I mean, I think this alone would make it worth running. <laughs> Just. Just for, like, guaranteed boxes at the end, and a lot of them seem to be weapons. Yeah, like, 12 guaranteed weapons. Seabed, bottom floor. Pretty solid. I could pick up those armors if I want money, of course. What do you have to say about it? You have nothing to say for us killing Okaflow? Whatever. Whatever, right, chat? <laughs> like, oh, you just killed the, you just killed the final boss. We're not going to talk about it. Anyway, let's put away the items. You know what the funny thing is? We could just immediately go into, like, a RT <laughs> after this. Don't even change anything at all. We just go into it. So I guess we'll do a little send-off, and then we might as well as RT after this. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo my D502, which I should have moved to Heavenly Attack Power, or Heavenly Power, the other boss, but whatever. And I guess we'll give our, our final thoughts on the quest. So, let's take one last look at the list. And we'll end the stream, I think, with some RTs. So. From that perspective... I think free seabed is fine. I like the guaranteed boxes at the end. Some of the traps are a little silly. But I think maybe if we are just looking for parasitic gene flow... Maybe we could just do free seabed into RT repeatedly. I guess that's a way to kind of double down on it and make it a bit different. Maximum attack for stage 1C is probably the one I disagree with the most. I think it is really great for lilies, for P1s. I just didn't like mines. And ruins was really enemy sparse. If enemy, if there were more enemies in ruins too, I probably would have liked it more, Like especially the ones that give spread needle or potentially more sorcerers for Psycho Wand or anything in there. But yeah, even with Green ID, it's okay. I probably have run this with Green ID retrospect, but that's fun. Endless Episode 1, I disagree with their statement, but I do think it's a really fantastic ID for Yellow in particular. Green, I think it's a pretty good, like, third one. I think I still prefer White ID overall. The reason why is if we take a look at the, the drops from here, you get things like Red Saber, Disco Brave Man, you get Handgun Mila, all from the same run. You get Shuren, mm, more Red Handgun, because that's from regular Lily. You can't get the Ajito, so that's out. You can get Red Sword, which is really good, Caduceus, which is useful. Heavenly Resist is kind of mediocre. Then for their Underground, you're just looking for Ubers. So this is their weakest area. Like, Yahoo Engine for trading, Parts of Brands for trading, Heaven Punisher is the real goal, S-Red maybe for trading. White ID, Handgun Golds is what a lot of people run if they already have Mila. So it's like, you might as well as do this one. It probably also has the worst ruins of the group, but it still has Red Ring. So I think overall, if you're just looking for Ubers, I think I'd still prefer White ID. Green ID comparatively has some decent ones with Spread Needle. I think it's okay. Like they're 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 a solid one. If you're not looking for Ubers, maybe I'd rate Green ID a little higher. But overall, it's like uh I don't know which one I would prefer, Green or Viridian. Because I think Viridian's also like I didn't talk about Viridian, but Viridian's actually also pretty good. So if we scroll this over a little bit. Like, there are some pan arms in the quest. You 
still get Shuren. You can't get Frozen Shooter anyway. The only real difference is, like, what the middle ground ones are. So you give up a red handgun chance for a Cheeto. You also get a Heart of Item. Honestly, maybe I'm more willing to root for Viridian. Because I would rather have Lavis Cannons, Swordsman Lore. Bringer's Right Arm's always fine. Luminous Field is okay for characters. The only thing they're really missing is Spread Needle. That kind of puts them behind. And Psycho Wand. But they trade Psycho Wand for Lavis Cannon. The, like... To me, that's kind of neutral, to be honest. They have, like, a very slightly weaker Ruins. They have, like, a stronger overall mind. Because people will pay for Viridia card, or they'll maybe do Heavenly Battles for free PDs. And I definitely like LNK over Holy right here. Plus, they still get Sange chances, so they could get Sange and Shuren, so I like their caves a little more. And it's kind of a toss-up for that. So yeah, maybe I would do specifically Yellow ID, Viridian, or, or Green, roughly tied, but White if I just want to do Verse. Welcome back. I think that's our final thoughts for that. So hopefully you enjoyed the quests. I think we'll be doing a few of those in the future, probably the random attack one in particular, to kind of put that in our repertoire for people looking to get Shurins. Uh, but that's it, I think, from the quest perspective. So stick around, we're still going to do some PSO. Uh, but we're done for the video. So hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully see you in the next part, YouTube.